Okay, this week I'm gonna be sharing some personal mistakes I've made as a recovering people pleaser because people pleasing was a huge part of my codependency. And if you relate to people pleasing at all, this video is for you. But first, if you're new here, my name's Michelle. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and I love helping people learn how to trust themselves and create relationships that work. That's what my channel is all about. So if you're a people pleaser, what you do is that you tend to focus so much on getting other people's approval by pleasing others first. And how that hurts you is you actually, not only do you please others first, but you deny yourself in the process. You deny what's important to you. You deny how you feel or what you need or expressing a different opinion. You don't risk it because that other person's approval and how they think of you matters more than anything else. And that's a tough way to have a relationship because that means all your power is put in their basket and all your self-esteem is put in their basket. And that's what I did for years. So what I'm gonna share with you is a conflict I had several years ago with a friend and how my people pleasing almost blew up that friendship because I want you to learn from my mistakes. So mistake number one, I pretended that everything was okay for years when it wasn't. I swallowed a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, because let's face it, when you're in a relationship with somebody, they're gonna hurt your feelings on occasion. There's gonna be some amount of conflict over the years. That's just normal. But as a people pleaser, we go to great lengths to avoid any type of conflict because we're afraid of either hurting the other person or we're afraid we're gonna be hurt. So we say yes when we mean no. We do things that are really hard for us or we overextend ourselves because we want that approval so much. And that's what I kept doing. I kept saying yes, I kept overextending myself and I was burning myself out. Now the problem is, is that that led to me pretending to be something I wasn't. Because every time I said yes, I was really lying. And that created a lot of dishonesty in my relationships, but nobody knew that. Even I didn't know that because I thought I was just being a nice gal. And I prided myself, look at how nice I am. I don't ever have conflict. But it took years, fast forward ahead, until I started realizing that I can't do that anymore. It was way too high of a price to pay. So mistake number two is I stuffed my emotions so much that I looked good on the outside, but I was really secretly resentful on the inside. I couldn't address any issue in my relationships because of that fear of conflict. I just kept taking it. I kept saying yes. I kept saying everything was fine when it wasn't. If somebody hurt my feelings, I felt it like a sucker punch in my stomach, but I would never say anything. And for a long time, I thought I was avoiding the problem by not, by not doing that. But what I realized was I was actually creating my own problem by doing that because I was never honest and I could never work anything out because in truth, I was hurting myself. I thought I was sparing the other person, but I was really sparing myself because I didn't want to be honest. I didn't want to take that risk until I finally decided to say something. So I was calm. I used iMessages. I started talking and I thought, hey, this is going great. But because I stuffed my feelings for so long, what happened was once I started saying how hurt I was, everything came out and I couldn't control it. Uh, I must have said five, 10 years worth of resentments in 10 minutes. <laughs> so of course the other person felt super overwhelmed and attacked because when you have conflict, you really wanna stick with one thing at a time. You don't wanna give them a barrage of history because it's too overwhelming and it makes the other person feel like they're being wrong or bad in some way. And that leads to mistake number three. When people pleasers finally reach their limit, they either blow up in some way or they cut off the relationship because they can no longer tolerate their own dishonesty. They have to say something. Now, if the fear is really intense, they'll leave the relationship instead. I didn't do that, but I exploded. I exploded in a way that I wasn't proud of and I felt really bad about. And it took me a while because I had some justifiable anger around it for a while until I realized that I did bombard this person with my hurt. But those were really painful lessons for me, but they were super valuable because in each one of those lessons in that conflict, I could see how my own behavior contributed to it. I could see how I wasn't being honest and how I couldn't really have a healthy friendship at that point in my life because I wasn't willing to do the work. I thought I was, but I really wasn't because a healthy relationship with anybody has to be based on honesty. 
and it has to be based on us being true to ourselves. And when we're people pleasers, we don't wanna do that. We're so hyper-focused on what the other person wants and needs so that we can be liked, we don't pay attention to what's good for us or what we need and what we think is important. That gets lost. So in turn, we get lost in the process of that. And that's what I did. I lost myself in relationships yet again because my people pleasing drove me into really unhealthy behaviors. And I don't want that for you. If you're relating to this video, I would definitely watch my video. I'm gonna put it up on the screen about being codependent because codependency and people pleasing tend to go hand in hand. And if you relate to that, click on the video here because that video is gonna help you give you more information on your own healing. Thanks so much.